Hey everyone, it's Jennifer. Today I have a video for you comparing some new inks that I've really liked lately. I've had a lot of questions, so I thought I'd do a quick video to talk about them. Now these are just the newer inks. Um, I don't include my favorite ink, which is the Distress Ink, which is great for techniques. But instead I'm just including these three inks because a lot of people had questions on how they compare. The first is Hero Art Shadow Inks, which is a dye ink. Now this has been out for a while, but lately they've been releasing a lot of great colors, so I'm considering it newer. Another ink is the My Favorite Things Color Box Dye Ink, which you can only get on their website. And then the bottom one is the newest, which is the Memento Lux Pigment Ink. So it's the only pigment that I'm considering here. And I'm going to compare and contrast how these all work. But first, before I do that, I think I need to talk a little bit about dye ink versus pigment ink, because I get a lot of questions about this. And this is a good um, thing to just have a fundamental understanding of. So I'm going to use this clear stamp that has a lot of solid area. Now this would normally be a stamp that's hard to get a good image from because there's a lot of solid area, solid area and it's clear. But with these inks that I really like, you'll find that you can get a good image. So I'm just going to compare two of them here, a dye ink and a pigment ink. And I'll talk about the other third ink a little bit later. So let's start with the dye ink. I'm using the Hero Art Shadow Ink as an example. A dye ink is generally a thinner ink, so it comes on transparent. So you can kind of see through my finger here. I'll do it in a lighter color so you can see how thin it is. So you can see right through my finger when I put this light ink on my finger. Now a dye ink does just that. It dyes the paper. So it stamps onto the paper, absorbs into it, and dries super quick. So this is a great one for just basic stamping. Now this over here is a pigment ink. It is opaque, so you can see, you can't really see through the ink. It almost is like a paint, kind of. Uh, this Memento Lux ink pad happens to be a, um, a very juicy ink pad, which I like. And you can see, I'm going to do it with this, even with a light ink, you can't see through the ink onto my finger. So now pigment ink sits on top of the paper more, so it's like pigments on top of the paper. So that's a good way to compare and contrast them. The dye ink dyes the paper and absorbs. The pigment ink st sits more on top of the paper. And you can add embossing powder and heat set that for heat embossing. If you don't, you might want to heat set your ink or it'll mess up, which I'll show you in a minute, because pigment ink sits on top of the paper and is slower to dry. Now let me compare how the ink pads look. Here is a dye ink. Generally, dye inks have a firmer ink pad made of felt, and you can see there it was quite firm. And generally, pigment inks are have more like a sponge-like ink pad. You can see it kind of gush down there. And so, now this is just in general. Sometimes there are exceptions to this, but in general, dye inks have a firmer ink pad. Also, what you see on the surface of a pigment ink pad is generally the color of the ink. So like that blue is what it'll stamp, but with the dye ink pad, it generally will be lighter than the color of the ink pad. So you can see that almost looks black there, but when it dries, it's a navy color. And the one on the right, the pigment ink, is that color when it stamps. So that's another thing to keep in mind because the pigment ink sits on top of the paper and gives you, a, you know, the color that you stamp. So let me just do an example here. You can see this really dark ink pad. When I stamp with it, I'm going to get a navy color. So it's a little bit lighter than the ink pad. Now dye ink is slowly absorbs into the paper and dries pretty quickly. Now pigment ink over here, when I ink up with the pigment ink, when I stamp this, it'll kind of sit on top of the paper. This is just kind of a simple explanation of it. It'll kind of sit on top of the paper and will stay wet long enough for me to heat emboss it. Now watch, if I rub my fingers over these, I won't mess up the dye ink because it dries quickly, but the pigment ink will smear. You can't see here, but it does smear. So when you're using pigment inks, you need to be very careful. If you want to make sure it dries quickly, just heat set it. So there is a quick overview of how a dye and pigment ink compare and contrast. There's one more thing I wanted to show you, and that is how these inks work on a darker colored paper. So here I'm even using craft cardstock. I stamp the dye ink first. You can see it kind of absorbs into the paper and gives you a, kind of a muted look, which is beautiful. However, if you want a vibrant look on a craft cardstock or colored cardstock, you want to use pigment. Because look at you can see how vivid that is because it sits on top of the paper and is opaque, so it doesn't let the craft show through. So those are just some things to keep in mind. Now I wanted to compare the three inks that I talked about. Let's start with the Hero Arts Shadow Dye inks. Now there are soft and mid tone, so a light and medium shade of dye inks. These have been around for a while, but like I said, they've kind of been cranking out new colors lately, and I think this is a definite must have. This ink is great for basic stamping, great for backgrounds. Um, I use this ink probably the most out of all the inks that I have, including the Distress inks, which is for techniques.
So here are two of the Hero Arts Shadow Inks. There's the soft color pool on the left and a mid-tone on the right, which is Tide Pool. I'm going to go ahead and stamp this on some regular white cardstock. Now, one thing to keep in mind with Hero Arts Shadow Inks is they stamp kind of splotchy and uneven. You see that there? But as it drives, it smooths out and evens out and gives you great, great coverage. So that's just something to keep in mind. You can see that splotchiness, but with Hero Arts Inks, they slowly absorb and will even out. Dye inks tend to do this, but mostly Hero Arts Shadow Inks. They have that feature, which is fantastic. Let me show you that up close. This uh, Over on the left here, I stamped the Pale Tomato Hero Arts Shadow Ink. I stamped that a little bit ago, and I heat set it. You can heat set it to speed up the drying. And I'm going to stamp it fresh, and you can see the difference in how, over time, it lightens and smooths out. That's something to keep in mind with this ink, uh, that it will change a little bit over time, but it's worth it, because look how good those results are on the left. So I love the Hero Art Shadow Inks for their special capability of absorbing and evening out and giving you great coverage every time. Next, I wanted to talk about the newest ink that I found, and that's the Memento Lux Pigment Ink. So this is pigment. So this is opposite of what we just talked about. This ink will be opaque and somewhat sit on the top of the paper. Now that gives has some pluses and minuses, but this ink I think is worth any minuses that it might have. It gives really good results. So let's go ahead and stamp this. I'm using regular white cardstock again. And when you ink up the stamp, you'll be able to see very easily if you have good co coverage. If you look at the stamp, you'll see that you can completely cover it with blue ink. Since it's opaque, you can see it all there. And then when you stamp it, you'll be sure you have good results. Now with this ink, pigment ink, it's very juicy. So I don't stamp as firm as I do with the other inks because uh, I don't want it to kind of squeeze out the side of the stamp. But this is something that you can practice and get the hang of very quickly. Now remember, this is an ink that will be slow to dry, which is great because you can heat emboss it. However, it can also be messy. If you touch it too soon, like I'm doing here, you will smear it. And if you get it on your fingers, it will get all over all of your projects. So if you tend to be a messy stamper like I sometimes am, you want to keep that in mind when using this ink. However, I think it's definitely worth it because the vivid results that you get are fantastic. So I feel like if you take the more muted, softer colors of the Hero Art Shadow inks and then also use some of the vibrant, more vivid colors, brighter, darker colors of this ink line, you have everything that you need. Now there is another ink that I've been really enjoying lately and it's the My Favorite Things dye ink. So this is a dye ink kind of like the Hero Art Shadow inks but um, doesn't have this, those special features that I talked about. Now this ink is only available on their website uh, but I think it's definitely one that's worth considering. So the, this My Favorite Things dye ink will absorb into the paper, but this ink pad's a little bit different than most dye inks. It has uh, kind of like a smooth, almost sponge-like ink pad. It kind of reminds me of the chalk ink pack, pads from Colorbox. You can see here it kind of smooshes down. Not as much like a sponge like the pigment ink pad, but this uh, you got to keep in mind when you're inking it. Uh, you want to make sure that you get really good coverage on the stamp, even coverage on the stamp before you stamp with it, then you'll get good results. So you just got to be careful with it. So when you stamp it down, you'll see that you get a nice solid coverage. Now this will soften the tiny tad bit as it dries, but not as much as the Hero Art Shadow Ink. So basically what you stamp is what you get with this ink, and I think it's fantastic. I especially like their more vibrant colors. So there you have the three different kinds of inks that uh, have been released lately, and I think they're all fantastic in their own way. I would suggest just trying a few out of each of the different kinds and deciding which works best for you. Between the three inks, there are a ton of colors. So I put an ink comparison chart on my blog, and it shows all the different colors together so you can decide which you would like to try. So I hope this general kind of overview of pigment and dye inks helps a little bit and also the comparison between the three different types of inks. And remember, I also think distress inks are a great ink to have. It's a very unique ink and is great for techniques. So if you have questions on the distress inks, please check out my blog as I use them quite often. If you have any other questions, just head over to JenniferMcGuireInk.com and thanks for watching.